parliamentary budgetary officer released a report today of the impact of the carbon tax on the society at large through 2030. The Conservatives say it proves that they were right. The Liberals say that it proves that they are right. Which one is it? Who's lying and who isn't? So I was watching Pierre Paul. I've talked to the press this morning and I heard him mention that the parliamentary budgetary officer had released the uh, new report, uh, Distributional Analysis of the Federal Fu- Fuel Charge Update. And you can see it here. What it, This is the cover of it. It's all very uh, straightforward. So he was talking, and Pierre Paulia was talking, and he said this. The parliamentary budget officer released another report today on the carbon tax. And that report confirmed everything I've been saying about this horrible tax, this ripoff. It showed that 60% of Canadians pay more in the carbon tax than they get back in rebates. 100% of middle class Canadians lose out. And that gap will get worse as the government goes ahead with its Liberal NDP plan to quadruple the tax to 61 cents a litre over the next five and a half years. Now, he said that as he was talking about a whole bunch of other things, he was trying to get the, uh, he was he was addressing the, a lot of the hate that's marching up and down Canadian streets and the burning of flags and things of that nature. And that, of course, triggered the Liberals to counter. Now, I'll be honest with you. I have to feel bad for the parliamentary budgetary officer because he is probably getting a lot of pressure from the Liberal government to say what they want him to say. And he's probably relying heavily on his reps to say, no, I'm not going to do anything but tell the truth. I mean, we talk about it as one person, but it's probably an entire floor doing calculations. Some of these calculations are projected out over years and they're complex. However... A few minutes later, a half hour later, whatever it may be, um, Stephen Gilbo, of course, won out on the floor of Parliament to talk about what he thinks about the Parliamentary Budgetary Officer's Report. And I'll let you listen to what he has to say. To comment briefly, unfortunately, on the, uh, the PBO's uh, latest report on carbon pricing. And for your benefit, I would like to read you the first paragraph of the report. Considering only the fiscal impact of the federal fuel charge, PBO estimates that average household in each of the backstop provinces in 2030-2031 will see a net gain receiving more from the Canada carbon rebate than the total amount they pay in federal fuel charge. And what Piapolev is doing is putting tens of billions of dollars of annual investment at risk with his campaign which is based on a lie and and it's time for him to come clean and apologize to Canadians for having misled them for so long. It's time for him to come clean and apologize to Canadians for having misled them for so long. That is going to be an interesting statement here in a minute when I let you hear something that the reporter asked him once he got done talking. So now he's out answered a couple of questions. He's done the whole thing in, in, uh, in French. And remember, that was, in his mind, the very first paragraph of the 47-page uh, report. The, the overall conclusion from the PBO, from his briefing, from his report, is that, yeah, we made an error, but largely the conclusion was the same. When you look at the economic costs, when you look at the household costs, you're paying more. So essentially they were right. Do you agree with that? Do you agree that... that he, this was that, not a really big that's not That's not what this report says. So you heard the reporter say that the parliamentary budgetary officer came to a microphone and that he also has in the report things that aren't written after, that are written after the first paragraph. So me being me, I said to myself, well, let me go have a look at this report and find out for myself exactly what's being said and what isn't being said. And of course, there is a lot of words that are being said. The parliamentary budgetary officer says that when he only looks at the fiscal impact, which is to say, when he takes a family of whatever it may be, and they spend X number of dollars directly on the carbon tax, the money that comes back to them directly on the carbon tax is a bit of a profit by the time you reach 2030. Unfortunately for Mr. Guibault, he doesn't read further because those reading further would mean that he would be proven wrong. So I came through the report, 47 page report, a lot of these tables that you see here in front of you. Now, 
it is Pierre Polyev's contention that 60% of the people will be paying more than they're getting back, 100% of the middle class. Well, first, I would like to draw your attention to the top where it says first quintile, second quintile, third quintile, fourth quintile, fifth quintile, and the average. Going to give you a basic understanding of a quintile. First, think of the idea that quint means five, right? And then you say, okay, so we broke it down into five groups and categories. You are aware of these categories. It's just that in in everyday common parlance, we refer to them as the first quintile is known as lower class. The second is lower middle class. The third middle class. The fourth quintile is upper middle class. And the fifth quintile is the high class, right? And we don't say those meaning how, mu- how you perform in your manners. We say those based on how much money you have coming into your household. So here we have the parliamentary budgetary officer tablet table three. So he did a table on what it looks like coming in and out. Then he did a table on what it looks like without any other um, numbers being included. And here is a table where he talks about the economic impact of the shrinking job. I mean, in some of the provinces that the backstop provinces, the economy is going to shrink GDP nearly 3%. So if we look at this, we can see right here said consistent with our March 23rd report, the update estimates continue to show that the average household across most income quintiles will face a net cost when both fiscal and economic impacts of the federal fuel fuel charge are considered. So across most quintiles, which is to say more than half, that will face a net cost, which means it's more is going out than is coming in. So far, we see that this is what the Pierre Polyev had, had, you know, insisted on. And we see how this goes directly in the face of what uh, Stephen Gilbo was trying to gaslight you into believing. Now, I say gaslight to be polite. But the reality is, is that he flat out attempted to deceive the Canadian voting population. But what I want you to focus on, the third, the, these quintiles go top to bottom, right? So in, in Newfoundland, in Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, so on and so forth. Now in Newfoundland, all five classes are on the top. In Alberta, all five economic groups are on the bottom, right? The third... In Newfoundland, they're going to lose $180 a year. In PEI, they're going to lose $202 a year. $370 for Nova Scotia, $214 for New Brunswick, $588 for Ontario, $218 for Manitoba, $155 for Saskatchewan, and $130 for Alberta. That's what the middle class is paying into the carbon tax by the time we hit 2030 in addition to the economy as a whole, shrinking. So Pierre Paglia was exactly correct because he said 60%, 100% of the middle class. Well, of the five, three of them are paying out. You can see that there's no little negative, no subtraction. If they have the subtraction, they're going to put a little bit of money in their pocket. If they don't have the subtraction, they're paying it out. Now, the poorest and the second poorest what don't they have oftentimes? Cars. So it's easy to say that they won't have to pay much in the fuel tax because they're not actually buying fuel. They take a lot of buses, they ride bicycles, that kind of thing. They walk. They don't drive vehicles. They don't pay insurance for their car, that kind of thing. They don't have the kind of income that supports that type of lifestyle. So that's an immediate easy way for the PBO to say, okay, wait, they're not going to pay out as much. Everyone above that, though, is going to be paying those kinds of, I mean, the middle class lifestyle is is rooted 
on the two car two cars in the driveway one for the teenager eventually i drive to the work i drive you know 100 kilometers to go to work every day i drop the kids at school all of that stuff that you think about that's why the suburbs work right we put people in their houses in the suburbs and we put the jobs far away here we can see on the next line the average household net cost of the federal fuel charge in 2030-31 by income quintile in dollars and as a percentage of disposable income fiscal and economic impacts now it's funny that peer uh, excuse me that stephen gilbo will always be talking about how the income the impact of not doing anything will be a, an enormous cost to the country and you don't even know 10 billion in this 20 billion for that but he doesn't you know these numbers are not real they can't they can't be attached However, the PBO was able to determine the shrinkage of the economy, which of course we know because we are what nine out of the eight out of the last nine quarters, our economy has gotten smaller. And we, we can see that the calculations that are laid out through 2030 are going to be every single year between now and then. It's not like it's just going to arrive there at 2030. So Stephen Gilbo looked right at the camera and lied to you. And I want to understand why he feels that lying to you was going to save this idea. Is it that he's getting so desperate that he doesn't care? Or was he always willing to lie to you about it? Is this the character and the caliber of the individual that climbed up on the house of a woman who was home alone and started banging on the windows and banging on the roof? Is this, this what we see here? A guy who will look directly into the cameras and say only part of the truth, half the truth, to try and hide and mask the fact that his policies and his plans are failing? Or not only are they failing, but they are doing the exact opposite of what he claims. We can see here that with the economic impact of how much you're going to be earning, how much you're going to be paying in taxes, how much the value of your homes are going to be, the economic impact of the carbon tax is going to attack the, the wealthiest 60% of the country. That includes the middle class which gets smaller and smaller in this country every day that the Liberal Party holds power, every day that the Liberal Party maintains its grip on this country. Now, Stephen Gilbo will look you right in the face and try to convince you otherwise. Justin Trudeau will say that same old, tired old line of eight out of ten people, blah, blah, blah. But the proof is in the report, the calculations, the economists that sat down and did the math. It's not one guy. It's a bunch of guys. That's why I, under, I feel for the guy, because I am sure that the Liberal Party is circling around his office trying to get him and browbeat him into saying whatever they want him to say, to lie. I mean, they don't care. They'll black it out, right? They don't, they don't, they don't care about the report as long as they can get what they want. They're not interested in solving the problem. They're only interested in you doing exactly what you're told. They're only interested in telling you what you want, what they want you to believe. And if you disagree with them, then they want you to apologize to Canadians. Well, it seems that Stephen Gilbo has been doing exactly the same thing that he accused Pierre Polyev of doing. He's been lying to Canadians for a long time and he owes them an apology. He owes all of us an apology. And I think that the best way to start his apology and Pete Gilbo is to tender your resignation. Simply resign from your post in cabinet and resign from the Liberal Party. Go sit as an independent and with any luck, no one will elect you ever again to hold any job ever. Not, not one of a public office anyways. Because you're willing, you're so in, enraptured by your desire to force us into this failing economic and failing environmental plan that you can't stop and tell yourself that you made a mistake. You can't stop and tell yourself that it's incorrect. You can't stop and tell yourself that you need to re-evaluate. You simply are just frothing at the mouth. And it, it, there's nobody ever anywhere who with such an ideological narrow vision is going to be capable or competent or qualified to solve any single problem. Never mind one as large as the one that you're trying to get Canadians, that you're putting Canadians through so much hardship over. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.